Hey, welcome back. Well, with back to school plans underway, a lot of folks are asking what the real effects of COVID-19 are when it comes to kids. They really are, and new research is looking to provide insight for parents. Now, we are joined now by local physician, Dr. Timothy Quinn, here to tell us what that research entails. What can you tell us about this, Dr. Quinn? Everybody wants to know, is it safe? <laughs> Right. I mean, there is a lot of research coming in every day, but before I even touch on that, I'd like to uh, read this from the Mississippi State Department of Health. As of July the 19th, 2020, no child under the age of 18 in the, in the state of Mississippi has died from COVID-19. And I find that very encouraging. And, and the reason I bring that up is children have less of a risk of losing their lives because I mean it's evident that no child has lost their life in the state of Mississippi and I, I'm just really excited about that. The research has repeatedly demonstrated that children they can contract COVID-19 but they tend to fare better. I mean most of the children have very mild symptoms and I'm talking maybe a runny nose, a cough, maybe a little shortness of breath but as far as being admitted to the hospital, being put on respirators, this is very rare. And in the state of Mississippi, our children have done very good. So I'm feeling optimistic, although children can act as carriers. And that's where my fear really kicks in. Yeah. Dr. Quinn, if you had a third grader, would you have any reservations about sending them to school this fall? Well, I mean, I do have some reservations. I mean, we have to look at the, the, the overall picture. And there was a really uh, controversial uh, paper released by the American Academy of Pediatricians, and they talked about the pros and the cons. I mean, basically, children not going to school, they're going to be at a deficit for many, many problems, such as the learning. I mean, the learning is, is not where it was when they were in school face-to-face -face with the teacher, but also, you know, psych so social issues that we might not consider. For instance, um, a lot of children depend on school for their lunch, for their nutrition every day. Um, teachers diagnose conditions such as ADHD, uh, learning deficiencies, uh, even child abuse. There's so many benefits to children going to school to just include the normal socialization process of learning how to interact with others appropriately. And I'm speaking of younger children, although we do have to be aware that there are risks involved but it's, a, it's it, you know, we just have to look and weigh it. But what I really like about the city of Jackson with JPS is for a lot of the children, they're going to get the option to do either or, but it just depends on the specific school. But the bottom line is we just have to look at the big picture on a whole. Dr. Quinn, I have heard that a lot of people believe that K through five really need to be in the classroom as well as our special ed kids, that, that, that that's important, but that... From, from the sixth grade on, learning um, virtually will will be okay. What what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, that, that's exactly correct because when you have children that are very young, that, that hands-on interaction with a trained educational specialist such as a, a teacher is, is, is gonna be very hard to replace at home by someone even like myself who has not had that educational training especially dealing with children that have special needs such as special education children but at the same time the school can and will and has demonstrated that they're going to do everything in their power to put in all the um, significant uh, arrangements to protect the children as much as possible to include children over the age of two according to the cdc recommendations to wear a mask at all times uh, trying to uh, socially distance the, distance the children as much as possible, leaving them in the same classroom all day instead of changing classes, instead changing the teacher from one room to another, and trying to have activities outside when they can really spread out when able. So the school is going to do everything they can, but at the same time, we cannot afford to compromise the education of our children right now. Dr. Quinn, you are always a wealth of knowledge. Thank you so much for dropping in thank on us you. and reassuring us somewhat. Uh, looking forward to hearing from you again here, here soon. So. Thank you, Dr. Quinn. Thanks.